All right, we are back for our fourth and final video. We are working today on finishing touches. We are working on highlights and shadows. We are working on putting together our collage using a process called decoupage or gluing it down. Um, we're going to use my favorite, favorite, favorite art supply, which I told you in the beginning was Mod Podge. And so I hope you did finish up all your pieces for your collage. This is where we see if our initial vision became our final vision. Now, just so you know, there are very technical ways that we could have done this collage, but we're working with something casual. We're working with artists of different levels, different ages. So I wanted to present something to you that was easy to do, fun and enjoyable. Okay, I am not grading you. No one is grading you. You're just here to be together with yourself, friends or family, learn a little bit about Kwanzaa and have a good time. So you made it to video number four. Um, it has been a pleasure working with you, giving you some real time demos. I didn't just paint it up and then, sh you know, just show it to you magically. I intended to work with you some videos longer than others but hopefully you did do your homework and you brought to the table all of your supplies for your final video so i'm going to switch the screen and i'm going to show you what i have and as promised i will give you all of the proper names for everything that we created today at the end of the video all right so let me switch screens All right, so whew, we got a lot going on, a lot going on, um, and I where do I start? Where do I start? Okay, we have the cup here, um, and I put in this cup the water paper that I showed you at the beginning. Um, yes, such a small area, but I really wanted to do it for fun. All right. All right, so it's full of water. I have my corn. I have my corn here. I had some fun with that. Remember, we don't have to know how to paint to paint or to use paint. I used a sponge, and you remember me going through the process of just dabbing it on so I could play with the different colors, and that's what I have done. All right, and then I use my Q-tip. Now, oh, artist Dina Ja, there's no such thing as blue on corn. Well, I don't know how true that is because technically there is something called blue corn. But remember, I told you, this is the time where you get to show your personality. Uh, my personality is there's a lot going on all the time. A lot of things going on and it feels crowded. And so that comes off in my art. That is um, a style that I embrace. We've created our mat. And remember, I just took a little paintbrush and just threw some more color on there. I used a marker and gave it a little pizzazz. And remember how I shredded by just pulling, just like this. I just took and I pulled. And that's how I created the fray. Very simple. Remember, we had to <clears throat> deconstruct our Kinara. And so you're still like, huh, well, you got two-piece Kinara. What are you going to do with that, Deanna Ja? I will show you. I think I'm saving that because I want to do something special. But I'll make that decision when the time comes, which is quite soon. We have our corn husks that we played around with. We gave it some texture. I shredded the paper. I left the white edges showing as I shredded that paper because I like that. We're working with paper. I like the roughness of making it look ripped, okay? What you didn't see was I made a mask. I'm going to make that mask look rougher. If you can see there's a shine to it, I don't like that shine. So I'm going to buff it out with uh, some sandpaper. I'm going to really be rough on it because I want to make it look old, all right? Not new. My candles, here they are. 
all I did was make one template and then I traced it all these different times to create my candles. Remember three red, three green, one black. And there is an order in which you light these candles for the days of Kwanzaa. All right. So they're all made from one template. They're all the same height. And I made sure to pay attention to the height to make sure that I can fit the candle and what? The flames. Yep, I made a fruit bowl. I actually made this fruit bowl from the middle piece of paper from the Canara because what? We don't waste. There is no point in wasting, all right? So I made a fruit bowl. And as you can see, it fits the fruit. So I made some fruit. I made some of the fruit separate and I made some of the fruit as one piece, okay? Got some grapes. Remember, I had fun making those grapes got an orange well, I have to hide it behind something because it's not a full circle and I made a lemon I wanted to make the fruit I wanted to make I didn't want to necessarily do pumpkins or anything like that now let's get to talking about this remember the mat and how we started with the end in mind I like a little bit of a rough edge on my artwork so I'm hoping that I can get some of the white unfinished edges showing in my art. Why would you want to do that? Because that's my personal style. If you don't like that most, definitely cover it up till you don't see a rough edge. I like a rough edge. I like when things look handmade. I love imperfection. Okay, it's just a part of what I love when I look at the artwork. All right, there's a time and place for it all. And so here's what we have. So for me, I'm just going to make myself a few little lines to let me know lightly with my pencil, hey, don't exceed these lines so i'm just putting a little indicator of where my actual mural ends and all i did was just take a little light line that i will erase later with my pencil but it is important for me to know at this point hey don't go beyond this point don't do it because things will not line up as you want. Hopefully your hands are clean because you don't want to mess up your mat. Remember, let's always move that mat. And by mat, I mean this mat out of the way. We don't want to ruin that. <clears throat> so why are we using a mat? Because I told you from the very beginning, we are creating frame worthy art. Now I lined up the work the first way you saw it but I can also line it up this way I do know this is in the back I do know that this is one of the first things I glue down but I want to show you something I'm bringing my mat back I want to show you something really quick something that I like to do for fun so I'm lining that mat up with the little lines I made I don't know if you would like this, but I love sometimes to exceed my frame, especially if I'm doing a fun collage. I like doing that every once in a while. It actually says, hey, this is three-dimensional art. As you can see, I have things hanging over the side. All right, so let's just keep that there for now. The Canara that's next right we need to make it low now one thing we have to do is consider we're always going to be moving things we're always moving things around in our inspiration picture the fruit bowl was over to the side so placement really matters 
when we're creating this art. And we're just going to continue to play around with it until we find something we like. So while I'm doing this on my end, I hope that you are doing it on your end. The reason why when I first showed you this work, see how I have my pineapple hanging over just a little bit right over the edge of the mat right here. The reason why I showed you the fruit on this side in the beginning was because I thought my collage was too heavy with too much green on one side. Let me figure out a way to fit this orange in here. Let me get these grapes in here. I'm gonna move this for a second. Get my grapes in. And I had a lemon. Oh, I covered my apple. Do I like that? No. Maybe I'll put this right here in front of. Okay. So we have to play with this. This is called composition and coming up with the ideas of where we want, what we want. What we want to cover up, what we don't want to cover up. Now, do I want the canara in front of the fruit bowl? What do you think? Do I want the canara in front of the fruit bowl? I don't like how it's covering up my fruit, so in my mind, I think it's best to put it behind the fruit bowl. Let me just smooth out my paper so it'll lay flatter. Did I want to cover up the design on my mat? No, I do not. Do I want to lower my Kinara a little bit? Maybe. We'll see. Now, of course, the reason why I thought, huh, that's too much green on one side was because this is the side that the green candles go on. Let me just center this black one first so I know where to work from here. Now when I glue it down, these candles are going to go in front of the canara just a little bit, like so, right there. But just for now, just because we're just looking and we're practicing, how are you going to remember which one you like the most? You're going to take a picture of your composition. Gee, wow, we're running out of space. Mm -hmm. When I'm working... I like to fill up my space. I almost like to make the background disappear. If that's not who you are, then that means that you make your pieces much smaller so that the scale of the pieces fit smaller within the piece, creating more airiness, okay? Maybe this is cluttered to you. To me, this feels like, it feels like me, all right? So you're creating the art that feels like you. Remember we have this, but boy, oh boy, we have other things too. What about our corn? And what about our mask? So now's a good time for you to make decisions, okay? Now's a good time for you to make decisions. And that's what we're doing right now. We're making decisions. We're deciding what do we want, where, and how. So let's say I put my corn here to start. And let's say I have my mask. Just flattening it a little bit back here. Now I don't want the bottom of this mask to show like that, but don't worry because we do have corn husks and we're going to use them to cover up anything that we don't particularly want to show. And so this is the part where we're just playing it or playing around. What would have happened 
if I just said, mm, you know what, I'm just going to glue, start gluing. We don't do that. We lay out our composition first. And we're just loosely laying it out. So remember when I said that this side felt like it had more green on it? I don't like that it has so much green. I don't like that. I want to balance my green out. So I think I'm going to go back with my first design, which had my green from the fruit over on this end. All right and um, I'll bring my corn back over here. But, uh-oh, we have this. Where are we gonna put it? Where are we gonna put it? Where are we gonna put it? Are we gonna raise the canara up? We definitely have the space to do so. And are we gonna balance this color here? These are decisions to be made gonna put this here and raise the fruit up so playing with your composition is going to take a good amount of time and I encourage you not to get to the very end and rush do I like the water over here I think I do especially if I can raise up my fruit so I'm gonna take my phone and I'm going to take a picture of my composition and that way I can study them and ask myself what do I want to keep what do I want to move all right so you take the time to do that and when I come back when I come back I will have known exactly where I want to put everything. But let's talk a little bit about shadow, a little bit about highlight. Highlight we can do after we've got things glued down, but let's talk about some shadow. You can only talk about shadow once you know where you're going to have your placement, okay? But um, I can show you right now. Do you see the shadow that this is casting? Shadow adds a little bit more interest and makes your artwork look not so flat. So we are going to add some shadow into our artwork. And we're also going to play around with moving corn here, moving corn there. This is our time to express ourselves. We can do anything we want at this point. I'm going to play with a few more designs and I'll be back with you. All right. All right, all right. Thank you so much for waiting while I thought mine through. Hopefully you got yours to the place where you are happy with. I have gotten mine to the place where I am happy with. And now is a really good time to help yourself, okay? And the way that we can do that is by creating a note. So we want to write down here what is first. The first thing is what's in the very back, the background. Besides the blue we painted, we're talking about the way we're laying, the order in which we're laying out all of our pieces, okay? So for me, I know that the mask is the very furthest back. So I'm gonna put mask number one. Another thing I'm gonna do while I'm at it is I'm going to draw my shadow line. So my shadow line is where I'll paint. Okay, I will paint inside. And I'll be using a gray paint inside. I'm also doing just a few really light pencil marks that I can erase to let me know that I'm laying my piece back where it belongs. Alright, 
So I feel confident that I can place this back where it belongs. And now I have some shadow lines, all right? I can't do that in the black marker this time for you. But I'll move this and I'll just show you with my pencil. I just drew the shadow lines further out than the actual piece. So here is the piece and where the piece is going to be. Okay, here's the piece and where the piece is going to be. I lay it flat like that. My shadow line comes further out. And I'm going to show you how I paint the shadow line so that you can see it more clearly. So don't worry. The second thing that is in the background is going to be my mat. Okay, so my mat. That's the second thing in the background. Because I took a picture of what I like, I can remove all of this extra because I now took a picture and know how to put it back. According to my picture, According to my picture, I can then see what's next. Okay, so now I'm working from my picture. All right, so I have the mask in the background, and then I know I have the mat, and then I have the Kinara. So the Kinara is number three. Yes, you do want to take the time to write this down. It's so easy to, once we're getting to glue, glue something in the wrong area. That's why we're taking our time to write it down. Then, in front of the Kinara, I have the fruit bowl. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue my fruit bowl together as one. So, it's going to be the bowl with the fruit already glued together as one. And I'm going to put a slash there because I also have the corn. Now I'm going to glue my corn and my husk. Oh, real life. Let me block all calls at this time. I'm going to glue down my corn and my husk to be a piece of one. All right. So let me show you. I'm going to glue down my corn and my husk to be a piece of one corn plus husk. H U S K. All right. And that I know the corn and the fruit are on the same layer. Now, up, uh, let me put a number five because number five I have to put a star because I'm going to put a big giant star because. According to my picture, some of the pineapple leaves go in front of the red candle. And once I'm blowing it down, I will show you. So pineapple leaf, I'm going to not glue one of those leaves down. And also corn husk. I noticed that uh, I have corn husk that is in front of my cup. So I'm going to put this little star on number five so that I can remember about my pineapple leaf and my corn husk. 
All right, that's important. That's why I put a star next to it. Now I have my number six will be my candles. And then number seven will be my cup. So I went ahead and I made myself a list of everything in the order it needs to be glued down. You can go ahead and do that for yourself as well. And then for number eight, I'm going to put flames, okay? All right. Let me glue down my very first piece and show you how we're gonna do our shadows. I'm going to clear my work surface, mix up some paint, and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. So I scuffed up my mask while we were not together. Remember I told you I was going to use the sandpaper and scuff it up. I wanted to make it look more weathered, more old. And I put some gray glue excuse me, I put some gray paint right here and I'm using just the gray that came and I didn't mix it up any darker because I don't want it to be black and I'm going to not using a whole bunch of heavy glue, excuse me, not using a whole bunch of heavy paint. I'm just going to paint in my shadow line. We're putting shadow to give the illusion of depth, okay? It definitely, remember I told you we don't do any flat work. Nothing flat, unless that's the intention of the piece. And with this piece, I want it to be known that there's some depth to it, okay? I'm using a thinner brush because I want a little bit more control than the brush and the Q-tips that, that I've been using. So I'm also don't want a whole bunch of paint because I want it to dry fairly quickly. At this time, go ahead and move your mat again if you've placed it there because we don't want anything to happen to that mat. We want to keep it nice and crisp and white or whatever color your mat is. All right, that should do it. Let's just see. I have those little lines. I drew to line it up where I want it to be. Okay. So here is my mask and its shadow. Okay. See the gray shadow? All right. So now. I'm ready to glue this down. Now, I'm using Mod Podge. You can use a glue stick. Mod Podge, I have some tricks I'm about to show you. So I'm gonna get the water out of my paintbrush. And remember I told you, I'm using matte. If um, you do not have Mod Podge, you can use a glue stick. So if you were gonna use a glue stick, be generous. I think I'll do like you. I'll use the glue stick the first few times and then I'll use Mod Podge a little bit. Uh, both work just fine. Ultimately, the Mod Podge that I keep talking about is how I'm going to melt my piece of piece together. So I have glue on here. 
I'm not comfortable with the weight of this paper and just using glue sticks. So that's why I'm also using Mod Podge. But, but if you wanna take a paper towel and put your hands down and hold them down uh, for 30 seconds. I have some 30 seconds. Let's rub it in and see I'm using the paper towel. I'm not really going over my artwork. I'm just using the paper towel and I'm just kind of rubbing and pressing it down. It would be the same if I used Mod Podge. One thing I want to be careful of is that my paintbrush is not drying out so I'll dip it in a little bit more paint just to keep it wet. You don't want that paint to get on anything so be careful when you place it. You also don't want your glue sticks drying out. <laughs> All right, let's see. All right, it's sticking down. All right, so now I have on my list my mask. If you have it pulling up on the sides, maybe that means you need a little bit more glue. Get a little bit more glue, a little bit more pressure and press it on down. So on my list, that was the first thing, the mask, and now I have the mask and I have the shadow. It says on my list, the second thing is the mat. Who? now that's a scary thing, this mat. And remember, we want some of the mat to hang over the side. So gluing down the mat is scary because once that mat is down since so many things are on top of that mat we don't have any second chances so i'm gonna go back to my picture gonna go back to my picture and make sure that where my mat is is really where i want it to be Hmm, scary decisions. Okay, it's now or never. So, just to be comfortable, I'm gonna bring this mat, and by this mat, I mean the framing mat. I'm just gonna bring it out one more time, because remember, I want my mat to hang over the edge so I'm going to make sure that I do not glue all of my mat down okay Oof. I'm nervous are you nervous all right so here we have it get the angle right Okay, it's now or never. Now I am going to use my Mod Podge to glue down the mat. If you have Elmer's glue or the uh, liquid white glue, now's the time to use it. That's not a job for a glue stick. Oh, this is brand new. Do I want to use brand new? I don't think so. Let me see if I have any open ones. Alrighty. Yeah. Okay. That was hard to open. So you don't want to mess up your artwork so the paper towel will be your friend and I want to keep this in place I don't want to move it too much but I want to get a nice G 
generous amount underneath this mat. should be enough to hold it in place and what am I going to do with my paper towel I'm going to place it on top and apply some pressure remember I did not put that glue all the way to the edge because I want some of my mat to be over the edge. So I'm going to move this back out of the way. So now that you see the order that I'm going in and where I'm going to place some of the shadows, I am going to look at my list, which will tell me what I'm doing next. Okay, the Canara. And I'm going to ask myself, do I need any shadow on that Canara? And then I'm going to glue it down. And a few more things. So I'll be back in that process, okay? You work on yours, and I'll work on mine, and I'll see you in just a few short moments. I'm doing just a quick check-in with you to see where you are. So far, I have laid out my mask with the shadow, the mat. The mat is on there. And I left this part so I can flip it up and put it over the actual frame mat. So we'll call this a placemat. So I left my placemat with a little bit of the edge to pull up. I have my Kinara down. And one thing you'll notice is I've gone ahead and I've given a little bit of shadow to my Kinara. Once that dries, I'm going to go over it with a brown marker just to indicate where this was sculpted and carved and where it has twists, turns, curves, hard angles, okay? So I'm going to put on some lines for that. But that's where I am. I'm going to go back to my list so that I can know what goes next. So now we have the fruit bowl and the corn husk. Now I do want to show you that. So let's talk about the fruit bowl cover this up the fruit bowl I want to make all one piece and good thing I took pictures of what my fruit bowl looks like best because I am going to recreate that bowl into one piece so let me get out my camera to see how it was set up and that's why we take pictures. We don't have to rely on memory. All right, so I have my picture here and I have my fruit bowl here. And I'm gonna reproduce. Okay. So the corn doesn't belong in the fruit bowl. So I have my orange first right here. So I'm going to glue this in place. You can use the glue stick. I like using Mod Podge, but just to work with you, just so you can see, I'm just gonna use the glue stick first. And I'm going to put my fruit in the bowl. Okay. Remember I said I wanted to create this as if it were all one piece.
If you have the Elmer's glue, you can use your Elmer's glue at this time as well, or your more liquidy white glue. So according to my camera, next will go the Well, this pineapple, it looks like I want it as high as possible, but I have the grapes in front. We want to work pretty fast with the fruit ball because we may have to lift up some pieces here and there. So I'm going to make sure that I'm reproducing what my picture shows. And then I have this lemon. If I don't like that, I can change it. I'm not going to get in trouble. Alright. So I like this, this way. So I'm going to go ahead and glue it down in that way. It's just easier to work with it as one piece. But we didn't make it one piece until we were ready to do that. Notice how I'm never really totally lifting things up. I'm just lifting it up a little bit. I don't want it to move around and I want it all to stay in place. So just lifting partially, just a little bit at a time. If you don't have that level of dexterity, don't worry about it. Now remember we can use paper towel or in this case a rag and just apply pressure. See how handy it is to take a picture of your work while you're working, especially with collage, because you need to know, okay, I like that setup. Oh man, what was it again? <clears throat> you have to be able to remember. And my memory is not the best. So I do things to help accommodate that. And making list is something that I have to do and I don't feel bad about it. Just a little bit of extra work. Pull up your piece because hey, you may have pressed it down and it may be sticking itself to something you don't want it to stick to. So pull it up so that you don't have to worry about that. So now what I say by one piece, now this is all one piece, okay? So let's take it back. And let's look at our picture. I'll turn it this way for you. And according to my picture, where is that fruit bowl? Here. It's covering up some of the Kinara. And I think that's okay because that's how it is in the picture. And we want to make sure we place it as high up as possible. All right? Because we want to play with want to play with the heights. We don't want everything all one level, okay? That's uh, boring and we want to play with the heights. Another way to play with the heights is to use shadow. So I can if I want to at this time. glue down my fruit bowl, but I also want to make sure that I'm leaving the room for my cup. Okay. And 
and it looks like I am so I have determined that some parts of my fruit bowl are going to be over the frame mat so I want to play play with some shadow if you see there's actually some shadow going down and it gives it some depth but let me press this down and draw some shadow lines All right, so I'm gonna paint on my shadows and I'll do it. You can watch. Just using this gray. I'm gonna keep holding this in place. Just, you know what? I think I will put some shadow lines over the Kinara. Why should it stop? Shadow doesn't stop. So I'll draw some of that over the Kanara as well. Because I know you probably can't see that, I'll start to paint. gonna block it with my hand so I can do it a little faster it's a two-part job so excuse me for blocking your view but I will lower it shortly and you can see what I've done and I want to thank you for welcoming me into your home I will be doing another workshop with the Reed and Trotty Library in February. And yes, we will be making collages and we will be doing Romare Bearden inspired collages. And I love Romare Bearden, so while you have some time, go ahead and look, look him up. Uh, he has inspired many artists, many creatives, and he is in the realm of the ancestors. He is no longer with us here. He has passed on. So look him up. And while you're at it, because Kwanzaa definitely centers around ancestors, maybe you can talk with your family about who came before you. Why were they important? What did they do? You know? Now's the time during Kwanzaa to get to know each other better. Talk about family. Who do you want to be? What do you want to do in this world? What are some of the struggles you're facing that you feel like are getting in your way of becoming the person you want to be? 
Is there anything that we can do about it? Working together? Is there anything that you want to do that requires that you have strong determination? I faced a lot of struggles and I'll probably face a lot more. And determination is the key. It has been for me. None of us are perfect. But what ways can we become better people for ourselves, for our family, for our community? What small thing can we do every day to bring us closer to our goals? What can we do for others? Maybe people that are not like us. What can we do different? All right, moved my hand for you. And I put in some shadow action, shadow action. I like the shadow action. Try to raise that up for you so that you can see. All right. <clears throat> I think I'll do another light coat over here because that's a pretty solid coat of shadow. If you do not have a steady hand, don't try this part because the shadow goes behind so you don't want your paint to end up in front of because then it changes the idea of a shadow. Shadow is behind you. to glue that down and I'm going to move a few steps ahead. I'll give you some time to work and I will be right back. So I'm back just to show you where I've gotten so far um, in my glue down process. I know that collage work is tedious. Uh, you can probably tell that it's getting later and later in the day. Um, but it does take a little bit of work. Now, I'm concerned with this open space right here. I don't enjoy that there's not enough variety of height and so these are areas that we will problem solve shortly so I'm going to keep playing with my corn husk so that they do not overwhelm the work and I'm going to do that by just starting the cut and ripping down just taming them Some of them I'm just going to straight cut. And by straight cut, I meant just, I'm just going to straight cut it. Okay? Not straight cut. I'm going to tame some of this here. And yes, I am going to have some husk hanging over the edge. That was intentional. So creating a collage with many, many parts is an act, you know, it's an act where you have to really be committed to what you're doing. I am excited because I'm at the point where I'm going to put on my little flames at the top of my candle. Have you created your flames yet? Now I cut out flames in three different styles. Just for some variety. I didn't want them all to look the same. I'm going to put them right here. Just a little bit over the top. I'm going to press them down. So 
my first flame on. Make sure it's centered. I'm going to put on a few more flames and then I'm going to ponder over what I can do with that empty space because I need to have something there that makes sense, that doesn't look like an afterthought, and that is definitely cohesive with what we're doing here. I'll be right back. So now I'm at the point where I want to be concerned about the highlights. So I feel like my candles are a little flat, so I'm just going to lay a pencil, not straight down the middle, but maybe towards one side, and I'm just going to give myself a highlight there. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing again on each candle. Just a little highlight. Just doing it on the edge of the pencil so I don't have to worry about are my lines straight enough? I like bold white lines. So if you are excellent at shading and you've gone about your mural a um, much different way, not your mural, excuse me, your collage in a much different way, I would love to see what you've done. All right. So I wanted to get some highlights there and go a little bit over this bowl again, just in certain areas. In the cup, I'm going to make a crisper line right here. And the reason why I'm being so bold with this white is because I have an idea that I think I want to try out. And it's going to involve white lines. So I want to not be afraid of the white lines in this work. They're not pure white, they're cream. Mixed it with a little bit of yellow, just a touch of the brown. I feel like I have a nice balance of that white so that if I use the white to help fill this space over here, the white won't be so shocking because I've balanced it throughout the piece. Do you have any empty spaces on yours that's unaccounted for? How will you fix it? What will you do? A little bit of white in the flame. On the flames, to get the yellow, I just used a, what do we call them? A Q-tip. So, when I come back, I'm going to have filled this space out with something bold. Just continue the movement in this piece, all right? This very, very full piece. I'll be right back and we are almost done. All right, so after taking my time and thinking through the decision, I didn't want to make a decision that would ruin all the time invested into the art. I wanted to enhance that empty space. I wanted to balance the color 
from this part of the art piece to that part. So I used my trusty sponge right here and I dabbed on some color, color that would bring the color and richness from the bottom up to the top. So let me show you the final mural, excuse me, the final collage. And I'm going to seal my collage uh, with the Mod Podge, okay? See how we just balanced the color and brought the color from below up to the top there? So I'm going to use Mod Podge in the dry areas and begin to do something that I call melting my piece together. I'm sealing it by putting a nice thick layer on top of my work. I'm being careful not to glue the edges that I'm going to have laying, laying over to the paper beneath. So I'm just putting my finger underneath and just putting that Mod Podge up on top and I'm just sealing it. It's going to give it a nice slight sheen but not so much of a sheen that it'll make your artwork too glossy to see. So this is going to dry. So right now it looks a little filmy as you can see like there's a milky color on top but it's going to dry clear. Trust me I would not ruin all of this time and all of this work. And this is what I call melting because I'm getting the Mod Podge under and underneath all of these edges. Just ensuring that my piece doesn't come apart. It's sealing the piece. So any type of space that has maybe a little bit of a pocket underneath it, I'm going to put my Mod Podge. Now, one thing I will tell you about this Mod Podge, pay attention to your brush strokes. I like seeing brush strokes. Brush strokes make me happy. So I'm not methodical with my brush strokes. I just make sure that I have enough variety of brush strokes so that they're not all going in one direction on one part of the piece and then going in another direction on another part of the piece. I'm also making sure that I have an even amount of Mod Podge over my piece. It's okay to go a little bit out of the edges. Of course, not on the parts that you want to lay over the frame mat. Looks like I'm, what am I doing? Putting that milky color all over. But just stay tuned, stay tuned, excuse me for that loud noise. Stay tuned because it is going to dry clear. I hope that you have had a great time with me. I do uh, create challenging pieces, challenging in the amount of work, in the amount of diligence that it takes to finish, but I do attempt to come up with lessons and workshops that are easily accessible. You don't have to have major skill to create something majorly beautiful. And this is something that you can keep in your family for many years. You can use it as part of your tradition or part of new traditions. And I just want to say Kwanzaa is a non-religious holiday and it doesn't center on any one particular figure, not even the founder of Kwanzaa, okay? Kwanzaa is a beautiful set of principles that can help us in the ways that we choose to walk in this world, in the ways that we choose to work with our community. 
especially who we choose to be as an individual, how we choose to engage with those that have come before us and pave the way, some things we can do better than those that came before us. In some of the ways, we're very grateful for what was done by those that came before us. So keeping in mind our ancestors, remembering those that came before us, the very important part of Kwanzaa, how do you do it in your family? Everyone's different. Everyone is different. So it's not about the founder of this holiday. It's not religious based. So this holiday was created for the empowerment of African Americans. You do not have to be African American to learn about Kwanzaa, nor do you have to be African American to practice the Nguzo Saba, to dialogue over them, to think about them, because they definitely apply. I would like to encourage you to support the institutions that are local to you, especially around this holiday season. When we think of cooperative economics, think about small black businesses that you can support. Maybe you'll find one of your favorite products there. Let's keep our businesses alive in the community. How can we make our community a better place? Maybe we can have a community cleanup. Maybe we can host a food drive. Maybe there's someone in the neighborhood that we can help. These are all the ways that you can celebrate Kwanzaa and acknowledge this holiday. I love putting the mat over the piece. It is the greatest joy for me, not just to be finished, not just to be finished, but to seal it or melt it together. If you have Mod Podge, get it under those crevices, get it into the air pockets. When you're doing collage, inevitably you're going to have some layers that are sitting higher than others. I like that. I get that Mod Podge under there. And I keep lifting up this part because I want to make sure that it doesn't stick to what's beneath it because I do want it to hang over the edge. Okay, if you're satisfied with sealing your piece, and you're satisfied with these brush strokes, you don't have any hair where you don't want it. See, I don't mind it some parts of my art but I definitely don't mind uh, taking it out when it's somewhere I don't want it to be. Don't fret. Just pull it on out. When you're working with better quality brushes, um, this does happen less but we're just a family right now and we're working with some accessibly priced tools and we're going to make the best of it. You can find me on Instagram if you want to show me what you've made. I'd love to see it. I have an art page that my students helped me start because they told me that that's where I needed to be. So you can reach out to me on Instagram. My name is Artist Dia Naja, 
D-I-Y-A-H-N-A-J-A-H. Artist Dia Naja. want to thank Redan Trotty Library and the funders of this artistic experience, this community arts experience. I do enjoy doing them. This was my first time doing a large scale virtual with you. And it was my pure joy to take the time to show you in real time how you can create your Kwanzaa collage. Now, I told you we were creating frame-worthy artwork, so I'm gonna let this dry and I'm gonna come back and show you it in a frame. So I'll be right back. So we are at the end and like I promised you I would tell you the proper names for all of the pieces that we created in our collage but again I enjoy my time with you I enjoyed leading this lesson in this workshop and I hope to see you again now let me show you what we've created I would love to see some of your creations So that's, that's our frame-worthy piece of art. I've placed it on a corner table and I've put things that I love there. I have a candle, I have a water for libation. I have a shaker that represents something very special to me as well as a bell. I have my ancestors present and I have a live plant and so let's talk about what we actually created so you know that we have the colors red black and green they mean something very special for african americans it refers to liberation struggle and the oneness with self so we have the canara which is behind the corn the canara is the candle holder and it holds the seven candles the seven candles represent the Nguzo Saba, which are the seven principles of Kwanzaa. So the black candle in the center represents Umoja and unity, and it is the first candle that we light. That we do on the 26th, which is the first day of Kwanzaa, December 26. Then we go from the left, the red candles, to the right, the green candles. The three red candles represent Nia, purpose, Kaumba, creativity, and Imani, faith. The three green candles represent Kuji Chagulia, self-determination, Ujima, collective work and responsibility, and Ujama, cooperative economics. They are placed to the right of the black candle, the three red candles. We have a bowl of fruit called the Mazao. We have the two or more ears of corn called the Mahindi. And then we have that all placed on the Mkeka, which is the placemat. The fruit and vegetables represent the harvest, which is the reward for working together throughout the year. And the ears of corn represent children. So I don't have any children in my home, but we still represent at least two pieces of corn for uh, the male and the female, uh, which would represent um, 
children and birth, but it also represents uh, it takes all hands to raise a child in the village. It takes a village to raise a child. We have a cup called a kikombe cha umuja. That's the unity cup. It's placed on the enkeka, as you see, I have mine there. And it is passed around after the libation statement. The libation statement is a way of remembering and honoring African-American ancestors and is a heartfelt request for peace, prosperity, and harmony for the new year. We do have some African art. I put some sculpture in there. And then you can also bring some books. And we can place them all on the Mkeka. Once the Kwanzaa table is complete, it is time for the celebration to begin. So I encourage you to educate yourself more on Kwanzaa. You can choose to add your own touch to Kwanzaa, uh, a level of individuality, which is what I did um, for mine. And uh, please learn the seven principles of Kwanzaa. I'm so glad to have spent this time with you creating this art piece, and I will see you soon. Harambe.